Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a very exciting discovery that might allow us one day to generate energy out of air. And this could also be one of the most exciting energy related discoveries of the past few decades. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Man. So this is honestly one of the more exciting papers I've seen in the last few years and it's mostly because of what's involved in it, how long it took for us to get here and most importantly the potential applications this could have in the future. So first of all let's discuss what's going on here and what exactly this is all about. Over three decades ago this wonderful person by the name of Derek Lovely accidentally discovered a new type of bacteria in a river in US and this is today known as Geobacter. Geobacter are essentially a very exciting type of a protobacteria or these ancient bacteria that are able to do quite a lot of things really well. In the last few years we've already discovered how this unusual bacteria can quite easily oxidize a lot of somewhat dangerous materials like for example a lot of radioactive metals, a lot of things like petroleum compounds or even just regular organic matter and it can then transform it into CO2 or carbon dioxide by using a very special reaction using um, iron oxide. In other words, this is a very useful bacteria for um, environmental reasons. It can easily clean up a lot of different environments. But apart from biodegradation, we also discovered this bacterium is actually able to produce what's known as nanowires. Here's an image of a geobacter with the very conductive nanowires that were produced through genetic modification. And what this essentially means is that we modify the bacterium to produce the kind of really really tiny wires that would be useful for humans. In this case we use the bacterium's machinery to then produce these genetically modified cables. And not just any cables, but cables that are really conductive. And realizing this, for the past decade or so, a lot of scientists started to study this in a little bit more detail, but more specifically, a lot of various studies tried to investigate if we can actually use this bacterium as a kind of an energy source. Like, for example, we could maybe use these bacteria to generate energy out of organic waste. This has been actually previously shown to work, but we haven't really been able to generate anything that would be either practical or easy to maintain. But when it comes to the so-called microbial electrogenesis, the bacterium discovered by Dr. Lovely, the so-called geobacter, is essentially the master of this unusual phenomenon. As a matter of fact, if you were to ever order any kind of an educational resource kit where it teaches you about bacteria and how bacteria generates electricity, geobacter is always the sample that's included. And so it was really only the matter of time and for Derek it was basically roughly around 33 years before finally something was discovered that allows us to generate electricity out of nothing. And in this case it generates it out of air. So this recent paper that was just published in Nature magazine essentially discusses and investigates the multidisciplinary discovery by Derek Lovely and another researcher from University of Massachusetts, Jun Yao. Both of these researchers actually work in completely different disciplines. We have a microbiologist and an expert in electrical engineering. But having combined forces, they decided to create a device they now refer to as AirGen, which in a nutshell is a microfilm filled with these nanowires created by the Geobacter bacterium. And through sheer luck, it turns out that it also generates electricity which like a lot of things in science was a completely accidental discovery. And it doesn't just generate electricity if you put something in it or if you um, add something to it, it seems to generate electricity if you just leave it lying around. And unlike previous attempts that use similar nanowires to try to generate something and only lasted for maybe a few seconds, here the researchers were able to generate electricity for several hours and as a kind of approval concept were also able to power an LCD that simply said hello UMass. In other words they were able to generate electricity out of air just like as the title says. But what exactly is happening here and how does this even work? Obviously this is not really getting air out of nowhere. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It has to come from somewhere. And in this case the scientists are almost convinced it comes from the moisture in the air. More specifically they actually believe what's happening here, although it's still a bit of a hypothesis, their explanation comes from the phenomenon known as self-ionization of water. Which refers to the idea that water molecules can kind of create charge by themselves. Some water molecules can become a little bit more negative, some water molecules become a little bit more positive. In a nutshell it sort of works like this. 
And as these slightly more negative or slightly more positive water molecules interact with the actual nanowires that were created by the bacterium, they start transferring these charges into the wires and this starts generating a little bit of electricity. In other words, as long as there are ionized water molecules and as long as there is an actual difference between the positive and negative charge, this allows the bacterial biofilm to start transferring charge and thus generate a little bit of electricity for at least a few hours. And here you can even see how much energy they were able to generate with this first prototype. It generated approximately half a volt of electricity with the current of about 1200 nanoamperes, which is actually really, really, really small. This is about 2000 times less than what you get in your cell phone charger with the voltage level of about 10 times less as well. In other words, you would need to have a much larger device just to charge your cell phone. But nevertheless, this is just a first prototype and of course, just a proof of concept. In other words, we still need to do a lot more work before we're able to generate some sort of a bacterial mega battery that can actually create enough electricity for the whole city and the whole planet. We're still far from that. Nevertheless, what's already been discovered is really impressive. So first of all, this is completely clean energy. There's absolutely nothing you need to add into the battery. It works completely just out of moisture from the air. It's also extremely low cost. The bacteria will generate these nano uh, wires really easily and quite fast as a matter of fact. And unlike other nano wires that usually require relatively expensive and also very polluting techniques to produce, these nano wires are made entirely by bacteria with just a little bit of genetic modification, which is not difficult for us to do anymore. Also, according to the scientists, this process seems to work inside, outside, even possibly in Sahara Desert where the humidity is relatively low and does not require sunlight or anything else. The bacteria are anaerobic, meaning that they don't require oxygen and can survive in relatively hostile conditions. So in that sense, this is almost like a perfect battery that we've been waiting for to discover for a very, very long time. And even though technically right now the amount of power generated is really, really little, this could already be used in various applications for all kinds of devices around us. The scientists have even suggested that you could technically paint your walls with this material and then generate enough electricity for the whole house just by having enough moisture in your house. This is of course really, really far away from being an actual reality just yet, but it's possible. And the scientists also mentioned that one of the first proofs of concept is going to be to find a way to generate electricity for a smartphone or even creating a battery entirely out of these nanowires that can be put inside a smartphone to charge it automatically by itself. In other words, imagine having a smartphone that you never have to charge ever again. Although I personally can see a lot more practical applications that could be used for this technology. But I guess smartphones are cool too. But it's really inspirational to hear how many new techniques we've been discovering to generate energy in the last few years. Like for example, there was another paper just over a year ago that explored the idea of so-called solar panels, but in reverse. In other words, generating power just through darkness, through the release of energy in the dark. In a more recent study, the scientists also identified that you can technically generate energy using melanin, the compound inside our skin that essentially gives you 10. Melanin is a really interesting molecule and there's going to be another video about this where we'll discuss this in a little bit more detail, but essentially this is yet another unusual and very safe way for us to generate energy. So hearing stories like this kind of gives me a lot of hope for the future of science and of course for the future of humanity, because I think we all agree that we definitely need to discover a new source of energy, hopefully sooner than later. This whole fossil fuel thing is not really working out for us anymore. And honestly, the sheer dedication that Dr. Lovely had to this beautiful bacteria for the past 33 years is actually really inspiring. Imagine studying something for over 33 years until you finally find a way to use this for something really useful to help humanity. So that's a lot of dedication. But anyway, I would like to actually learn more about this project as it goes along and hopefully in the next few years we'll have some sort of a device that even uses this technology. But for now, it's just a prototype. Don't get too excited, we're not going to have cities powered by this bacteria anytime soon and it's very likely that it's going to take decades before anything somewhat useful is actually made out of this. But until we discover what to do with this and until someone creates something useful, that's really it. You can check out the paper for this in the description below. You can also probably reach out to Dr. Lovely directly on his Twitter account. Although please don't bombard him with messages all at once because I think he might get a little bit upset. But anyway, on that note, thank you so much for watching. Let's cross our fingers and hope that someone creates something useful out of this. And until further discoveries, that's really it. Check out some of the previous videos I made on amazing discoveries we've made in the last few years. And subscribe if you still haven't. 
Share this video with someone who loves learning about space sciences or really any other amazing discoveries that we've made in the last few years, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying a wonderful person t-shirt, or a pillow, or even a hoodie. But anyway, on that note, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Once again, thank you so much for watching, space out, and as always, bye bye.